Okay, welcome back. Crude oil refineries owners of Association of Nigeria asking for CBN intervention and more crude. Um, well, we do know that the issue of modular refineries have had a lot of questioning even before now, but perhaps things have changed. We have Mr. Eche Idoko, the Publicity Secretary of uh, the Crude Oil Refineries Owners Association of Nigeria, joining us from Abuja Studio. Good morning, Mr. Idoko. Thank you for your time uh, this morning. Yeah, good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning. Yes. Yeah, so, um, I mean, the situation seems to have changed in Nigeria. We see modular refinery, crude oil uh, owners association, uh, people like you coming to the fore now and even asking for CBN intervention. Um, tell us, how far have you gone uh, with uh, conversations that could bring you into the mainstream of providing or contributing to the provision of petrol and some other uh, field that the country needs? Oh, yeah, thank you very much, um, Ini. Um, well, quite a lot of significant, significant progress have been made um, in bringing the modular refineries to the mainstream when it comes to issues of um, providing um, petroleum product to bridge the gap, the supply gap in Nigeria. Um, shortly before COVID and after COVID, um, the, the, the Ministry of Petroleum had set up a committee um, that um, produced an interim report and a white paper had been presented on it that was supposed to address a lot of the issues um, that had bedeviled the development of refineries in Nigeria. And permit me to actually um, make this clarification. There's always this um, um, dichotomy or this differentiation between modular refineries and conventional refineries. But as a matter of fact, they are not different. They are meant to achieve the same purpose. So whether you are a conventional or you're a modular refinery, the idea is to help the country achieve, you know, self-sufficiency in petroleum refining. So um, um, the whole intervention program that we are pursuing and what the government had done um, in time past was um, geared towards making the country self-sufficient in um, pr production of petroleum um, products, refined petroleum products in country. Um, so uh, we have um, the, 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 the association alongside the government have done a lot in making sure that um, we are able to um, overcome these challenges in supply. Um, and what you have seen now, what you're seeing now um, around um, refining in Nigeria is a product of what had gone in time past. So tell us how far you've gone, because I know the issue of um, availability of crude um, has always been a challenge uh, most for most of the refineries, uh, members of your association, especially now when you have the NNPCL promising Dangote, Dangote, I mean, you know, is operational now. We're expecting to get its products from this month. How do you hope to, you know, get screwed when even before Dangote, that was, a, that was difficult for you. Now you now have a major like Dangote. How do you get, manage the issue of crude availability in the face of that? Okay, thank you very much. Um, the challenges we had with crude over time was not... Um, with availability. It was about, it, it, it was more or less with the policy that would make it available. So whether Dangote or no Dangote, we have enough crude um, to supply the refineries, the, the refineries and the, the licensees that we have in Nigeria. Um, beside Dangote, the modular refineries, about 30 of them, if you are to give them um, um, crude oil, you need just about 2.5 uh, million barrels a day. The, our probable reserves, our capacity is about 37 billion barrels. So we have more than enough. Um, but then what we had had challenges was the policy to drive it. And one of the big, big gains that we had over the year was the passing of the PIA that made, um, that created a domestic supply ob obligation for crude oil for local refiner, refiners in Nigeria. And that has um, solved a lot of issues 
around the supply. But what we have lacking now is the policy implementation. But I must add at this point that um, recently, um, the, the NMDPRA had reviewed their guidelines. Um, three of them have been gazetted. There's one major one that affects um, local um, refining that we are expecting will be gazetted any moment from now that will address the issues of supply. And then um, what we are saying is that what has been you know, captured by the PIA and has also been captured by the, the regulatory um, guidelines should also now be implemented through a coordinated desk um, that would make it easy for um, refiners who already are constructing or refineries are already operating access crude. Um, because right now they seem not to be, or before now, they seem not to be this um, coordinated approach to supply of crude. So where do you go to? You write to NMDPRA, do you write to NNPC? Now NNPC has become fully um, um, a business concern is no longer a regulator. So we need the Ministry of Petroleum and the NMDPRA to coordinate access to this crude to make it easier for people, um, for refineries to actually um, access this crude. And so that is where the issues are now. Having the right framework, the right policy framework, and the right um, uh, temp uh, platform for accessing crude from these suppliers. Because what needs to be done had already been captured by the PIA that says you are to give, um, you are to give, um, give, consider local refineries first in supply of crude before even export. And then now that you have, they've also um, um, abolished what they call the direct sale, direct purchase. It means we have more crude available to us and all that. It's just the, that coordination that is needed from the various agencies to make sure that refiners can access this crude. And how far are you going with that coordination? Also, I'd like for you to chip in just before uh, we run out of time. The issue of security, that is a major bane to the growth of our um, uh, revenue in, from the oil and gas sector. As an association, do you have like a plan? How do you work? Are you, I mean, the federal government had to work with, you know, some individuals. So how are you protecting your facility and products that uh, will be coming from you? Okay, so um, yeah, in terms of security, um, we we call we do a lot of collaboration. The good thing about modular refineries is that the nature of its establishment is such that you have to work a lot with the communities. Where we we have a, a robust relationship with the host communities, and they become our frontline um, security providers. So the, the communities first, and a lot of them because of the the advantages that refineries, heightened refineries in their community brings, and also the provisions of PIA, um, we, we, don't, we don't have a lot of, we don't have central issues in terms of security because they are, they are also part, we, we, we inculcate them into the projects. Most of um, the licensees and owners of refiner, modular refineries work with the local communities. And the local content provisions have also made it a lot easy. So they participate even from the, de the development, from the one, from the clearing of the site to the construction and even to supplies. Um, the contract of supplying and even off-taking, they are part and parcel of it. So it makes the issue of security a lot easy. And we have also worked with a lot of um, inter, um, inter governmental agencies um, um, and also fostering ways in which we can actually um, address issues around security or any other issues. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Eche Idoko, Idoko, the Publicity Secretary of Crude Oil Refineries Association of Nigeria. Uh, well, this is obviously an ongoing conversation because uh, uh, oil and gas especially at this time when there's no more subsidy, has become more attractive. Thank you for your time, and we do hope to have you or a member of the association soon back on the program. Yeah, thank you very much.